us for the first time, if you're joining us for the first time, you are so very welcome. You are in the right place right here. You shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Those of us who have been here from the beginning of the week will testify and say so. As I reflected over the message yesterday, one of the things that really struck me was the fact that the disciples were fearful because they still didn't know who Jesus was. Who is Jesus to me? As I reflected, I cried out, Lord, I want to know you so that I can trust you, so that when the storms rise, I am able to stand in faith based on my relationship with you. We are in a series, intense or emergency prayer with Pastor Dr. Bolo, who has as I've always said, a very long bio. Time is gone. So allow me to just pick one thing from his bio today as we continue to learn more about our speaker. Dr. Bolo had pastors, has pastored many churches in the US and worked in Canada. Newburgh, Victory Temple, Elim, Community Tabernacle, Sharon, Hans Point, SDA Church in the Bronx. And he presently works at Brooklyn Temple, SDA Church in New York. Pastor Bolo is a church builder and soul winner for the Lord, and the Lord has blessed his ministries in the communities that he and his wife find themselves and in the churches where they minister. And so, Pastor Bolo, it is over to you again, once again, for you to bless us this morning. We are waiting with open hearts, with open minds, so that we may receive the word from the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are so kind. You are so kind. Um, we want to thank you very much. I want to thank God for his grace and his mercy. Despite our technical problem this morning, I heard, I heard it. Um, I know I, I'm seeing all of you that are online. I want to say to God be the glory. The enemy is not going to stop us from proceeding with God's word and God's plan. So we want to bless the name of God. I want to pray quickly um, because I, I believe God hears prayer. I want all of us to agree as I pray a short prayer regarding the blackout. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will restore, you will move in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, turn with me into, in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4 and 15. Matthew chapter 15 for for you that are um, joining us this morning, your very first time, we want to see you welcome. Um, wherever you, uh, you're joining us from, we want to see you welcome. We pray that you are blessed as we go through and, and, and spend time in God's word. Matthew chapter 15 is a powerful story in there that I want to talk about. Matthew chapter 15, when you get there with a the preacher, say amen. Matthew chapter 15, this is what the Bible says. And, and, and I'm going to read beginning with verse. find it quickly here. Uh, Matthew 15, yeah. Verse 21, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Ty and Sidon. I'm reading from the King James. And, and behold, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me. O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter, is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And the disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. Verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Verse 27, and she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made hold from that very hour. Intense prayer or emergency prayer. Today, I, 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 you know, we've been talking about the men, Peter, James, John, and all of we want to 
we want to talk about a Phoenician woman. Jesus has been in Matthew 15. He has been teaching. He's been in debates with the Pharisees and, and the scribes and the Sadducees that were unwilling to learn from him, that questioned his ministry, that really did not know who he was. And yesterday we talked about, do we really know God? Even the disciples that were closer to him really did not understand or know who he really was. And now the Pharisees around them did not help the matter. The, the Sadducees and, and the scribes did not really help the matter. And they questioned every move of Jesus. They wanted to know if he was the Messiah. They wanted to know his lineage. They, they said he, he, missed, he made false accusations as to who he was. And so Jesus decided, I'm going to leave this region and I'm going to enter another region. Now he's entering the territory of the Gentiles. Now you got to understand the Gentiles and the Jews were not, were not close friends. They, they did not, the Jewish, the Jewish folks considered the Gentiles to be dogs. In fact, in Matthew 7, they said, don't cast pearl to swine or, or to dogs. They, they considered the Gentiles to be Outcast. They, for them, the kingdom of God belonged to them, and for the Gentiles, they had no right to the kingdom. But in their questioning and their uh, 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 questioning Jesus' authority, Jesus said, I'm going to now go to the region of, of the Gentiles. So he entered Tyre and, and, and see them. The Bible says something amazing. The Bible says, as Jesus entered the city, now you got to understand, this was one of the financial capital of the world. But not just that, in their city, the Asian city, when you enter in the region of Canaan, you saw the temples and temples of gods and, and goddess. They had several goddess and gods temples all around the city. You saw marbles, marble buildings and structure to, that I worship gods and goddess. The only thing is, those were not true gods or true God. They were God cast, cast, cast by hands. Gods that could not speak. God that could not talk. God that could not respond, respond to, to a question. Gods that, that could not answer their request. But it's a worship. The sin sacrifice. And I read an account that says that during those days, demon possession was common because people mingle with all kinds of things. And, and so witchcraft and demon possession was easy. It was common. Many people got possessed. And so Jesus entered the region. As he enters the region, a woman meets him with his disciples. Now, now look at this. There's a woman that is leaving all behind. Leaving her temple gods, a God that's leaving everything behind and she sees Jesus and straightway she follows Jesus. The Bible says she followed Jesus and said unto him, crying in a, a crying voice, she said unto him, have mercy on me. Oh, Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievous, this vex with a devil. First of all, this is a Gentile, a Phoenician woman that have confessed that Jesus is of the lineage of David. She has confessed that Jesus actually is God, has power, and, and has been prophesied about. Uh, she's not a Jew. She's not an Adventist. She's someone outside the fold. She's saying, have mercy on me. My daughter is vexed with a devil. In other words, she recognized who Jesus was. Do we rather know who Jesus is? And the Bible says, she said, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now she's asking for mercy on her. It's like a mother saying, have mercy on me, my son is possessed. Have mercy on me, God, my son is, is, is a drug addict. Have mercy upon me, oh God, my daughter has become a prostitute. Have mercy upon me, oh God, my home is falling apart. Have mercy upon me, oh God, I don't know how I'm going to make it tomorrow. There is no food in the home. There is no money in the account. There is no food on the table. Have mercy upon me, oh God, I need an answer from you. 
And the Bible says, as she follows Jesus, she's crying behind Jesus. And Jesus does not say a word. <laughs> Somebody say, have mercy. In Isaiah 65, 24, it says, before we call, he will answer. You, you, you see, while we are yet speaking, he will say, here I, here I am. In other words, God knows the heart and thought of man. But here is a woman that is at the mercy of Jesus. She's not pleading for her son. It sounds like someone today on this line, you're on this line this morning, you're not pleading for yourself. You're pleading for somebody. You're saying why others are calling. God, please do not pass me by. You are pleading. You are asking for a child. You are asking for, for marriage. You are asking for a breakthrough. You are asking for a situation. And think about it. Jesus has not said a word. And on top of that, the disciples that are walking closer to Jesus turn. To Jesus, says, Jesus, send this woman away. She's disturbing us. You know, I tell people in America, when I go to church on Sabbath morning, when I stand up and I welcome the guests, I say something like this. I say, if you feel a shouting shout, you feel a raising holy hands, raise holy hands. You feel a praising God, praise God. And the reason I say that is that during the week, you don't understand what they went through. You don't know the struggle they've been through. You don't know the trials. You don't know the headache. You don't know how to cry at night. You don't know how to toss on their bed at night and looking for an answer. And, and they could not wait for Sabbath to come and give praises to God. The problem is there are people in church, uh, sometimes your own loved ones, there are people in church that want to silence your praise. They want to hold you back. They're saying you're too loud. They're saying you are disturbing. They're saying you made the same request last week. They're saying you made the same request last month. They're saying a year ago you made the same request. And they turn to Jesus and say, Lord, send her away. The Bible says, but he answered in verse 24 and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In their response, because the Jewish, the disciples were Jewish folks, they said, Jesus, this woman don't even have right to be here. She don't have a right. To be among us, she don't have a right to call on your name. She's a woman and she's a Gentile. She has no qualification. And Jesus playing into their prejudice, Jesus said, okay. Jesus turned to the woman and said to her, I, I, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, 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 if I'm talking to Jesus as a male, if I'm talking to Jesus and making a request to him and he's quiet for a while, if that is his first response, have mercy, I'm walking away. Hey. You can say amen, say ouch. You know people have walked away from God. Just at the verse of that breakthrough, are you there with me? You see, you see, but what this woman did blew my mind. Uh, when Jesus said that, you think she will walk away, but in fact, she said, then came she and worshiped. Uh, at this point, they keep her for a distance. But when Jesus finally caught her attention and Jesus said, now let me have a talk with her. And Jesus said to her, woman, I, I, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Asia. Instead of walking away, she intensified her prayer. She intensified her worship. Instead of walking back, instead of going out disappointed, Amen. she came pressing on to the master. Instead of uh, and saying something else, she bowed down and began to worship God. Yes. Have mercy, somebody. Amen. How can we worship God? When bills are high and funds are low, how mm. can we worship God when family and friends desert us and conspire against us? 
How can we worship God when people say all kinds of stuff about us, even in the very church we find ourselves? How can we praise God? Mercy. Instead of walking away, she came closer to Jesus. She said, I bless your name. She said, Jesus, you are still the center of my joy. Amen. She worshiped God. She said, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There yes. is still a precious fountain. She mm. worshiped God. She said, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to mm. him, I freely give. She worshiped Jesus. She said, in the morning when I rise, give mm. me Jesus. She said to God, the Lord my rock, in him I hide a shelter in the time of storm. Instead of backing away from God, she increased and intensified her praise. Someone give God a hand of praise wherever you are this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm going to bless your name. You know, it sounds like Job to me. You remember in Job chapter 1, when the devil killed all his children and burned his home and stole his stuff, and the news came to Job. Instead of Job cursing God, because the devil thought Job was going to walk away from God. Instead of Job cursing God, Job called for the barber, give me the haircut. They gave Job a haircut. Job wore a robe, and Job bowed and began to worship God. He said, naked I came, and naked I go. The Lord gave it, and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of God. Now, are you see, you see, praise comes amidst crisis. Mm. My kids are still on drug, but I'm going to bless the name of God. Man. I've just lost my job. I'm going to still worship God. My marriage is falling apart. I'm going to still praise the name of God. My wife or my husband don't want to come with me to church. I'm going to still go. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to keep praising and praising my way through till my breakthrough show up. Are you there with me? Amen. Amen. Then the Bible says, but Jesus, but he, but he answered and said unto her, I know you're worshiping me. I know you're praising me. But, but, but lady, let me, may I suggest to you, may I tell you that it is not good. It is not me to take the children's bread and to give it to dogs. Somebody say, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. What do you do when the word that comes from Jesus' mouth sometimes seems to be the word that you did not expect? Mm. Because in the Jewish culture, the, the Gentiles were considered dogs. And Jesus was playing into the prejudice of the disciples, trying to see what they thought about him. They're trying to see if, if they thought he was one of them, like them. And Jesus was just playing into the prejudice. Jesus said, uh -uh, it is not me to give the children's bread to dogs. Have mercy. Somebody say, ouch. At this moment, I will really walk away. Hey. I tell God, you keep your blessing, I'm walking away. But the woman declared to Jesus, she said, truth. Hallelujah. You see, the woman was meek. She was humble. And she was patient. You see, she was meek. She said, yes, we are considered dogs. You are considered dignitaries. But, but, but the truth, she was patient. She'd been pressing on. <laughs> truth. God, what you said is the truth. What you just declared is the truth. That's what the thing about us is the truth. But what do you think about me? I know they said I'm not qualified to come to church. I know they're talking about me in church. I know the talk of me in the community. I know they're pointing finger at me saying I cannot control my own children. I know they're saying my marriage is falling apart. I know they're saying that I don't have money. I know they're saying that I don't have that. But, but it is true, God. But what do you say about me? 
She said to him, truth, Lord, even the dogs, hallelujah, somebody, so much to be praising mm -hmm. God at this moment. Yes. She said, Amen. even the dogs, listen to me now. Yes. She said, even the dogs eat from the crumbs that falls from the master table. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. She said, yes. truth, Lord, I know they said all of this about me. But I want you to understand, I know there is still blessing in store for me. Mm -hmm. I know they share all of this, but God, and he just whispered a word. I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here because my home is falling apart. I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here because my children have lost their minds. I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here because my marriage is failing up. I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here because the job is about to be taken away. I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here for my family. I'm just the intercessor. So what do you think about me? See. The Bible says Jesus is blown away. Wow. Oh, so much should be praising God this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, such a faith moves the throne room of God. Amen. Such a faith moves the arm of God and the heart of God. Mm. The Bible says, then Jesus answered and said unto her, Oh woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. Hmm. Friends of mine, part of intense prayer has to do with patience. Part of intense prayer has to do with being meek and humble. Part of intense prayer has to do with being long-suffering. That my change will come. Part of intense prayer says... That weeping might endure for a night, but yeah. joy is coming yeah. in the morning. Part yeah. of intense prayer says that trouble will last always. Part of intense prayer says, I have been young and I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed yeah. begging bread. Part of intense prayer says, the Lord will make a will away yeah. somehow. Part of intense prayer says, if he can provide for the birds, the birds of the air, if he can provide for the lily of the field, I, I'm much more better than they are. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because God has sufficient for me. Amen. Mm. Mm. We have heard the joyful sound. Amen. Jesus says, yes. friends of mine, as I close this morning, God is looking for faith <laughs> in Tanzania. He's looking for faith in South Africa. He's looking for faith <laughs> around the world. God is looking for faith. <laughs> He's looking, at, looking for somebody <laughs> that can pray and move his head. Mm. Because you see, prayer is that communication we have with God. You know, you look at these things, you think it's just a conversation, but it's a prayer request. Prayer is the communication we have with God. Mm. Amen. God is looking for a daughter this morning. He's looking for a son this morning. He's looking for a boy. He's looking for a girl this morning that said, truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord, but I can still benefit from the crumbs that fall from heaven's table. And that's enough for me. Amen. Friends of mine, I want you to understand this, despite all that is happening in the world, if we keep our faith in Jesus, The blessing he has for us is that he will make us the head and not the tail. Yes. The blessing he has for us is that he will cause us to rise 
the high places of the earth. The blessing he has for us is that no weapon form of fashion against us will prosper. Yes. The blessing he has for us is that we can go into the enemy's camp and, and, and take back that which they have stolen our children, our marriage, our loved ones. We can take back the blessing God has for us. But all he's looking for this morning is looking for faith. Yes, yes. Do we have faith this morning? Even when we can't see him, even when we can't trace him, even when we don't hear him, do we still believe? Bow your heads with me this morning. Bow your heads with me. Father, please increase our faith. Let the foundation, we are at your mercy. But God, we will be patient. We will be humble. We will be meek. We will be long suffering. And then God, we will declare that all that has been said about, all, about us is the truth. But yet, what you think about us is what counts. And God, this morning, you said that the plan and the thought you have for us is higher than the heavens. Higher. And that it has an expected end, a glorious mm -hmm. end. So mm -hmm. God, may we reap that glory, glorious end. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.